This is lesson 7.3, adding and subtracting rational expressions with monomial denominators. As you've seen in the last uh, couple lessons, there's not a lot of theory behind these. You guys have a lot of the tools in your uh, toolkit already to uh, simplify these questions. And so as a result, basically I'm just giving you uh, some more examples. Uh, so you can see kind of how you go about doing these. Uh, so again, I want you to remember as you're watching these videos to, uh, once you've seen maybe one or two examples, to try a couple on your own, then fast forward uh, and see how you uh, do on your own. Okay, so I think that'll help your learning out. So let's get started here. The strategies for adding and subtracting rational numbers can be used to add and subtract rational expressions. Okay. And so I've broken this down into three different steps uh, for you. Step one says identify the non-personal values of the variables. Step two, write the expression with a common denominator. And then step three, add or subtract the, uh, the numerators. All right. So again, uh, as you've seen with all of these, we first are going to write down what your NPVs are. So uh, I will do that right here. Notice for this one that I have x cannot equal zero, right, with the three x like so. So from this stage, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and figure out what my LCD is. Okay, so I'll do this over on the side here. Your lowest common denominator, right? Well, what's a number that 7 and 3x go into? They both go into 21x. So when I try and simplify these, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then go and write each one over 21x to start. And then from there, I'm going to look at the 7. What do you multiply the 7 in order to get 21x? Well, I multiply it by a 3x, so you have to multiply the numerator by 3x, giving you 6x squared. The 3x, what do you have to multiply it by? Well, you have to multiply it by a 7, so the numerator is multiplied by 7, giving you 35. From here, all I will do now is I will join the denominators together, since they are the same, and that is my solution. Very, very straightforward. Okay, believe it or not, you are going to have questions that are that easy. Let's look at the next one here, B. First thing I will do again is I will start with my NPVs. For this time, what you do is you have A cannot equal 0, and also B cannot equal 0. Imagine if you put that in for either of those, A or B, you'd end up getting a denominator that's 0. Okay. Now what I will do here is I will look for my LCD. Your LCD. What's a number that both 5AB and 4B squared go into? Well, what you do here is first kind of look at the uh, coefficients, the 5 and the 4. Well, a number that 5 and 4 both go into is 20. And then what you do for the exponents is you have to pick an exponent that, uh, like basically the highest exponent of each one. So the highest A exponent is just A. The highest B exponent is B squared. Okay. So each one of these expressions I'm going to write as 20AB squared. 20AB squared, like so. Okay. Now I look at the 5ab. What do you have to multiply 5ab in order to get 20ab squared? You have to multiply it by a 4b. So this is going to give me a 16b up here. The 4b squared, you have to multiply it by a 5a, giving you minus 15a when you multiply the 3 by the 5a. Okay. Then gathering my um, terms up here, all putting it over the same common denominator, that is my solution. Let's take a look at C. Pretty straightforward. I think you can imagine this would be a good spot for you to maybe try some of these on your own. X cannot equal 0. That's your um, NPV. And when we go and simplify here, you can write your um, LCD like I've been writing. For this one, you can probably see it's fairly straightforward. A number that 8 and 6 both go into, that would be 24. And then you take the highest exponent that we have, that is X squared. What do you multiply the 8x by in order to get 24x squared? You multiply it by a 3x. So I'm just going to do this all in one step. Um, when you multiply it by a 3x, you get 3x squared, plus multiplying the 5 by a 3x, you get 15x. On this side, what do you multiply 6x squared? You just have to multiply everything by a 4. So we get 4x minus 28. Now here's uh, an occasion where you actually can gather your like terms in the numerator. So always write them in descending order of power. So the 3x squared comes first. The 15x and the 4x gives you 19 of these x's, minus 28. Okay, that being your final solution there. Let's take a look at D. D, I will see that C cannot equal 0. D cannot equal 0. And my LCD for this one, well, your LCD will be 3 and 5. A number that goes into, uh, or 3 and 5 both go into is 15. And then we'll have C squared D. So I'll write each one of these as something over 15. C squared D. 
Okay. If you actually want right there to write it as all one common denominator, that's fine by me. Um, I'm just in the habit of writing them as two separate ones. Uh, for this one, what do you have to multiply it by? Well, you have to multiply it by, I'll show you maybe one extra step that you can add in. What do you multiply the 3CD by? You multiply it by a 5C. And so then if you want, if this is easier for you, you can write this kind of intermediate step. On the other side here, what do you multiply the 5C squared D by? You just have to multiply it by a 3 onto C plus 8. Okay. Now multiplying these, I have, I'll write it all over one common denominator. You have 15C squared D. On the left-hand side here, this is 15C squared minus 10C. Oops. All right. Now you have to be careful here, and this is where students often go wrong. This negative is the big problem, so make sure you understand that this negative 3 is actually going to be fed in here and here when you use the distributive property. So this becomes negative 3C minus uh, 24. Okay. Uh, from here, what do you see? Well, I see that you have 15C squared. That's your only C squareds, but the C's can be gathered to give you a negative 13C, and then we have the minus 24 all over that 15c squared d. Okay. So that wraps up the first page. Let's mosey on to the next page. I think I've got two more for you. Um, you'll notice here that I have uh, added a term. Okay. So starting with your NPVs here, we would just have that a cannot equal 0. And now we need to get what your LCD is. So we have three different terms um, that we have to deal with. The 2, the 4a squared, and the 3a. Let's deal with the 2, 4, and the 3. The number that 2, 4, and 3 go into is 12, and then this would be an a squared. So we're going to write each one of these as something over the 12a squared. Okay, to start, what do you multiply the 2 by? Well, you have to multiply it by 6a squared, so this gives you a 30a squared. What do you multiply the 4a squared by? You have to multiply it by a 3, so this gives you a 9. What do you multiply the 3a by? I have to multiply by a 4a, giving you a 8a like so. Now, gathering my like terms, well, there aren't any to gather, but I will write them in descending order of power, so notice how I switch the order around ever so slightly, and write this all over the common denominator. Okay. And the last one right here, f. Okay, this is a little bit of a doozy. Get you to try this one on your own, perhaps. Uh, start out with your MPVs. Z in this circumstance cannot equal, what do we have? Zero. Okay. So now we need to start with your LCD. What is your LCD for something like this? Well, we get that uh, 8, 3, and 6. The number that they all go into is 24. All right. And so you may struggle doing this. What uh, I might suggest is first take a look at 8 and 3, get a common denominator or a common multiple between those two, and then see uh, if the 6 will go into it. Um, that might be a part where um, practice will make perfect for you. have to deal with it a couple times. Uh, now, we have the z squared and the z. The highest exponent is the z squared. So I'm going to write everything all over that 24 z squared. Okay. So on the far left-hand side here, I have to multiply the 8z squared by a 3, giving me 6z plus 3. I have to multiply the 3z by an 8z, giving, giving me, uh, what do we have, 32z squared minus 32z. And uh, what do I multiply the 6 by? You have to multiply it by a 4z squared, so that gives me 32z squared minus, what do we have here, 4z. Actually, this one will end up being z cubed, right, because we're multiplying it by the z squared. So now gathering your like terms here is a little bit more interesting. The um, z squared or z cubed will have to go out in front. Notice that because this is a negative, it's fed here and here. It actually turns this 4z uh, cubed into a positive 4z cubed. Now I'll look for my z squareds. I have a 32z squared here and a negative 32. Those cancel out. I have 6z and a 32 minus 32z. That gives me negative 26z. And lastly, I have the lonely 3 plus 3. So that concludes this lesson. To summarize, uh, I want you to, again, uh, we've done this basically in all the lessons so far, identify what your non personal values are, uh, figure out what your lowest common denominator is going to be, and then uh, simply add or subtract the numerators and simplify.